to talk about London. And many people are already very familiar with this most visited city in Europe and how much it has to offer. Every district in London, which is divided into the thriving and distinct regions of the North, West, South, and East of London, as well as the commercial and tourist center of Central London, has its recognizable neighborhoods. In London, there is always something to see and to do. It is impossible to get bored in London because it has some of the world's best art, entertainment, dining, shopping, and history. Number five, take a stroll in the most famous Hyde Park. Being the largest park in the heart of London, it is also the most significant green space in the city and where many visitors and locals go to unwind and breathe some fresh air. The oldest park in the city, Hyde Park, has hosted concerts, protests, and duels ever since it first opened. Gun salutes are fired from Hyde Park at noon on special occasions, particularly royal occasions. You can go for a walk and forget about the busy city traffic, among other things, but you can also skate, cycle, and sunbathe. Deck chairs are available for rent in the park for those who want to relax but don't want to lie on the grass. Boating in the Serpentine Lake, a small oasis home to a variety of wildlife, is one of the most popular activities for both tourists and local Londoners alike. Hyde Park hosts several events throughout the summer, particularly concerts. Speaker's Corner is located in the northeastern section of the park, where on Sunday mornings, speakers and eccentrics take the stage, deliver speeches, engage in discussions, and hold debates on a variety of subjects, primarily religion and politics. Seeing people gather to listen to, applaud, or jeer the various speakers makes this place both interesting and peculiar to visit. Number four, solve the mystery of Baker Street. You must have read a lot about 221 B Baker Street, but in London, you can come to visit it. Bustling Baker Street, one of central London's main thoroughfares, is best known for its connection to Sherlock Holmes. The fictional detective, according to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's writings, lived in 221 B. The Sherlock Holmes Museum honors the region's literary legacy today. Enter the Sherlock Holmes Museum's recognizable front door to explore the super sleuth Victorian apartment. In Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's tales, Sherlock Holmes and his devoted companion, Dr. Watson, resided at this address from 1881 to 1904. It has been kept intact to provide a window into the detective's personal life. Discover Holmes's personal belongings as you make your way through the Victorian homes lit up by gas lamps. And you may also come across some of Watson's items. Additionally, the museum hosts a display of life-size wax figures from Sherlock Holmes's most well-known adventures. The fun thing to do here would be to visit the gift shop, which is stocked with oddities and trinkets, like deer stalker hats. Around the corner is the most well-known wax museum, Madame Tussauds, where you can take photos with your favorite stars. After that, take a break from Baker Street's crowds by visiting the nearby Regent's Park or ascending Primrose Hill for London's best cityscape. Number three, the diversity in Camden Town. In North London, Camden is a well-known cultural district. The crowds in this area, which is well known for its alternative culture, are made up of both locals and tourists. There are many piercing and tattoo parlors in this area of Camden, which has a thriving body mod community filled with goths, punks, rockabillies, and tourists alike. The people are what make Camden such a wonderful place to visit. It has such a diverse population of residents and tourists with many coming from all around the globe, who are all taking in the hip, cool, and amiable vibe of the neighborhood. And no one will be shocked to learn that. For many poets, writers, and artists, 
Camden has served as both a home and an inspiration. A few well-known residents of Camden include Dylan Thomas, Amy Winehouse, Virginia Woolf, and Charles Dickens. Visit Camden Market to look through vintage clothing, handmade jewelry, unique presents, and eye-catching accessories. The market combines Camden Stables Market, which was formerly a horse stable and hospital, and Camden Lock Market. Start the day with a filling breakfast, and then move around to browse some vintage clothing. Stop by one of the many cafes or street food vendors for a delicious lunch. With storied venues that have given rise to many well-known performers, Camden has long been a center for the live music scene in London. English folk music has its origins at Cecil Sharp House, which also houses a remarkable collection of manuscripts, recordings, and sheet music tracing the development of English folk song and dance. Watch for regular performances by both upcoming and seasoned singers. There are many different ways that creativity is displayed in Camden Town. Make sure to look upwards while checking the shops so you can admire some of the magnificent art. Many of the shop's higher floors are brightly painted in vibrant colors, and some even have objects like enormous dragons sticking out of the paint. These striking works were created by a mix of well-known and unidentified street artists. Camden Town will keep you amazed and engaged throughout. Number two, gaze at London Eye. The London Eye, also known as the Millennium Wheel, is a design, engineering, and architectural marvel that took hundreds of workers from five different countries for seven years to complete. Unexpectedly tall, at 443 feet, this metal Ferris wheel was completed in 2000 and has since grown to be a popular tourist destination and recognizable landmark. Each of the 32 glass capsules that make up this impressive structure weigh 10 tons and can hold up to 25 people. The wheel spins continuously, albeit at a very slow pace, allowing passengers to board and exit without having to stop. It takes about 30 minutes for a ride to complete. The London Eye provides a breathtaking panoramic view of the city and its surroundings. Although the sun can obscure views of some parts of London, on sunny days, it is possible to see out over 24 miles. The 4D Experience, a brief film in three dimensions about London, is also included in the entry price. Number one, Buckingham Palace. Anyone traveling to London must visit Buckingham Palace. Perhaps you're a huge fan of the royal family, or you just want to visit one of Britain's most significant cultural sites. No big deal. Inside its big, opulent walls, you'll find something you love. The history of the palace is rather lengthy and interesting. Without one, it wouldn't be British. Queen Victoria, the first recognized resident, lived there. The palace didn't become the royal residence until that point. Many monarchs have come and gone since then. The artwork in the royal collection includes sculptures, paintings, tapestries, and other items. But the enormous treasury is only a portion of what you will see inside the palace. Nevertheless, the occasional Rembrandt or Rubens will still be on display for all to see. The enormous painting of Queen Victoria's coronation, which must be seen to be believed, is amongst the highlights. It's enormous. Numerous visitors have stayed at Buckingham Palace over the years, and it's not difficult to understand how with a whopping 775 rooms. All things considered, there is more than enough space for the royal family, even though there will be many more future royal children. If they do, at least there may be additional national holidays. And why not? London sees a pool of tourists every year because of obvious reasons, and we just mentioned a few of those reasons. Now that you're very well familiar with some amazing things you can do here, when do you plan to visit London? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?